Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about the meninges. Meninges are the coverings of the central nervous system. Here I will draw a very rough sketch of the central nervous system which consists of the cranium and the spinal cord. This is the tubular structure, the spinal cord. And this total consists of the central nervous system. And they are uh, covered by three layers of the meninges. The innermost layer that covers is the pyometer. Pyometer is the inner, innermost layer of the meninges. Outside of pyometer, we have arachnoid mater. This is the arachnoid mater, and then we have the dura mater at the outermost part. Okay. So the inner layer, the innermost layer is the pyometer. Outside of pyometer is the arachnoid mater, and the outermost part is the dura mater. These are the three layers of the meninges. Now first. Let's talk about the dura mater. Dura mater. Dura means durable, thick, strong. Dura mater is also known as pachy meanings. Pachy means thick. Okay, this layer is very thick, and it is uh, divided into two parts. The one that covers this uh, brain is the cranial dura. Cranial dura meter covers the brain, and the one that covers the spinal cord is the spinal dura. Okay, so two layers. We have the first. We have cranial dura. Cranial dura is further divided into again two layers. Okay, this cranial dura is further divided into two layers. The outer layer is the periosteal layer. And the inner layer is the meningeal layer. Okay, suppose this is a portion of a skull, and here we have the brain. So let's say this is brain. Okay, the inner layer is the pyometer of the meninges. Outside of pyometer, we have the arachnoid mater, and then we have the dura mater. Dura mater, we have two layers. Okay, the one layer that is nearer to the skull is the periosteal layer. And the one layer that is nearer to these meninges is the meningeal layer. Okay, so these are the two layers of the dura mater. This is the periosteal layer, the outermost layer of the dura mater, and the meningeal layer, the inner layer of the dura mater. And these two layers, at most of the places, they are very tightly attached with each other. There is no actual space between these two layers, only some potential space. Okay, they are very tightly connected with each other, especially in sutural areas. Okay. But in two areas of our brain, these two layers, they are not very tightly connected with each other. What are those two layers? Let's learn. First one is the dural venous sinuses. Okay. So as these two layers, they go along. Okay. And then we have a vein running through our skull. So this is one of the dural venous signs. Okay. So these two layers, they separate with each other like this and they... Uh, go around the the venous sinus and then they again join each other okay so at this area of the dural venous sinus these two layers are not connected to each other another is the folds of dura mater so what are the folds of the dura mater this is the periosteal layer of the dura mater right now in some areas the meningeal layer of the dura mater it goes like this and it makes a fold in itself like that and then again it goes along with the periosteal layer. So this is a fold of a dura mater which is found by the meningeal layer, the inner layer of the dura mater. At these two places, the dural venous sinuses and where the folds of dura mater are, at these areas the two layers of the meninges are not connected with each other. Now, this spinal dura, okay, so this is the cranium, so let's say this is the brain and this is the spinal cord, okay. We know there are two layers of the dura mater in the brain, covering the brain. Whereas in case of spinal cord, there is only one layer of the dura mater. The meningeal layer of the dura mater covers the spinal cord. And it's alone, it's alone enough to protect the spinal cord. So where does this, uh, the periosteal layer goes, okay? So here we have the skull. Let's say this is the skull, okay? Through the foraminas that are present on the skull, the periosteal layer of the dura mater, it will continue out as the periosteum, like this, okay? 
it won't go down to cover the spinal cord. The periosteal layer will continue as the periosteum of the bone, whereas the meningeal layer will go down, continue to cover the spinal cord. Um, now let's talk about the folds of the duramater. Right. Duramater has four folds. They are falx cerebri. Okay, what is this falx cerebri? So this is a very a rough sketch of, of brain. This is a cerebrum, right? But we know there are two cerebral hemisphere. Okay, so this one is the right cerebral hemisphere and this one is the left cerebral hemisphere and we are looking at them right now through the lateral view. This is the lateral view this, uh, of the two hemispheres of the cerebrum. Now let's look at them from the frontal view. So here is the right cerebrum and they are connected with by the corpus callosum and this is the left cerebrum. So that's how the two hemispheres of the cerebrum looks like from the frontal view, okay? And obviously we have the skull here and these two layers are uh, covered by the meninges. Uh, sorry, these cerebrums are covered by the meninges, okay? And then we have the duramater. Now about the falx cerebri, okay? So here is the periosteal layer of the duramater that is going along with the skull, like that, okay? Periosteal layer of the duramater. Now, up, uh, as the meningeal layer, it comes like this. At this fissure here, you see this fissure between the two layers, uh, between sorry, between the two cerebral hemispheres. The, uh, the meningeal layer of the duramater it forms a fold like that, and then it again comes along with the periosteal layer of duramater. So this fold of the meningeal layer, which divides the two cerebral hemispheres into two compartments, this is the false cerebri. Okay, if looking from the lateral view, then this is the periosteal dura and the meningeal dura, it will just form fold like this and it will go move inside this fissure, the two fissure between the two cerebral hemispheres. This is the falx cerebri. Okay, falx means sickle shaped. As this fold is in the shape of sickle, this is called the falx cerebri and the anteriorly, this false cerebri is connected with the anteriorly, it is connected with a part of bone here that is crystagalli. Anteriorly, false cerebri is connected with the crystagalli, and at this above part, above it is connected with the uh, sutural ligaments. Okay, sutural ligaments of the sagittal suture, above ligaments of sagittal suture. And posteriorly, at the posterior part, uh, it is connected with another fold of the duramater that I'll talk about later. That's the tentorium cerebelli. Okay, posteriorly it is connected with the tentorium cerebelli. So that's with the false cerebri. Another is the. Let's talk about tentorium cerebelli. Okay, so again here I'll draw our brain. Here we have the brain stem, the midbrain, the pons, medulla, and the spinal cord line. Right? Behind this brain stem we have cerebellum, right? So this is the cerebellum. Now the periosteal layer of the duramater goes like this. This is the periosteal layer of the duramater. Now as the meningeal layer of the duramater comes like that, it forms a fold between the two cerebral hemisphere and this is the false cerebri, right? Now as it comes downward, it again forms a fold between the, uh, the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Now this is a taint shaped fold of the duramater, hence the name tentorium cerebelli. It protects the cerebellum from the pressure of this heavy cerebrum, okay? That's the function of it. And anteriorly, it forms a notch like that so that the midbrain could pass through it. And these notches are there uh, attached in the anteriorly. These are attached to the clinoid process. Okay, clinoid processes. The anterior clinoid process and the posterior clinoid process. And at the sides, okay, laterally, 
it goes like that like this laterally the tenturium cerebelli is connected with the um, superior border of the superior border of petrous bone okay petrous temporal bone lateral posteriorly it is connected with the the two bones the parietal bone and the occipital bone we can on occipital bone so that's with the tentorium cerebelli another fold is the falx cerebelli remember falx cerebri it divides the two hemispheres of the cerebrum and the falx cerebri as same it will divide the two hemisphere of the cerebellum okay so here is the cerebellum right this is the cerebrum between cerebrum cerebrum and cerebellum we have tenturium cerebelli like this okay yeah tenturium cerebelli and we have uh, two hemispheres of the cerebrum uh, cerebellum as well and this duramate also forms a fold and that will give that will divide the two hemispheres of the cerebellum like that this is the falx cerebelli and it is also in the shape of sickle shaped okay the last fold is the diaphragma celli diaphragma celli okay diaphragma means in the shape of a diaphragm now let's say this is skull there is a bone right here that's known as cella torsica it's a part of a sphenoid bone it consists of a hypophyseal fossa where we have the master endocrine gland okay this is the pituitary gland cella torsica is this uh, depression right here and it consists of the pituitary gland and the roof of this cella torsica is covered by the diaphragma celli which is another another fold of the duramet okay like that so but this is the pituitary gland say and this is the pituitary stalk yeah the diaphragma celli comes like that and obviously it will form a small hole here to allow the passage of this pituitary stalk the infundibulum and then it will cover the hole of the cella torsica so these are the four folds of the duramater okay now let's talk about the blood supply and the nerve supply of the duramater first and the blood supply duramater is the only major layer which is supplied by the larger blood vessels it is supplied by the branches numerous branches of the internal carotid artery the internal carotid artery is the ascending pharyngeal artery ascending pharyngeal and then we have the vertebral arteries the maxillary and the occipital arteries so these are all the uh, arteries that supply blood to the duramater now coming on to the nerve supply the anterior cranial fossa Okay, duramater covering the anterior cranial fossa is supplied by the meningeal branches. It is supplied by the meningeal branches of anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerves. Okay, duramater covering the anterior cranial fossa is supplied by meningeal branches of anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerves. Duramater covering the middle cranial fossa middle cranial fossa is covered by the same meningeal branches of maxillary maxillary and mandibular nerves maxillary and mandibular nerves and the one covering the posterior cranial fossa so this is supplied by the meningeal branches of of the first three cervical nerves 
So this is the blood supply and the nerve supply of the dura mater. If you want to know the mnemonics to remember this blood supply, then I created, also created a mnemonics. It is, it is opium. Right? Opium is the mnemonics for the blood supply to dura mater. O for we have the occipital arteries, P for the ascending pharyngeal, I for internal carotids, and uh, instead of B for vertebral arteries, I have written U here just to match it. Okay, and then M for the maxillary arteries. So you can remember it as OPM.